Hey, what's up guys? I'm going to unbox and review this new Wi-Fi 7 router by Netgear. This is the Nighthawk RS700 with a crazy fast speed rating of BE19000, has 210 gig ports, covers up to 3500 square feet, and does include one year of Netgear armor. Now, I am going to do all my speed test range tests using my Wi-Fi devices like I normally do, and let's just take a quick look at the back. So, essentially, basically telling you it's a lot faster than Wi-Fi 6, and having used other Wi-Fi 7 routers, including the RB970, Wi-Fi 7 is ridiculously fast. All right, so let's get started. It has a diagram of everything on the back, so all the connections, the different language. Netgear Armor includes a year of this. We have our power supply. It is 100 to 120 volts volts output is 19 volts at 3.16 amps so that's the plug right there a very unique plug category 6 cable so cat 6 ethernet cable and yeah that's pretty much it here and here it is so taking a closer look it is abnormally large that is my first impressions of the router in fact i brought my orbi 970 which is Netgear's latest Wi-Fi 7 mesh system. And you could tell they're about the same size. And this Netgear Orbi is probably, and actually not probably, it is the largest mesh system, largest router basically I've seen. And the Nighthawk is almost as big, almost. So very large router. And I think that's because it has powerful antennas inside. So I'm expecting great speeds from this. Okay, so we have a sync WPS button. We have an LED on and off button. So I imagine some stuff is gonna light up here. When I turn it on, we have a sticker on the top. I am hiding that, but you can scan the QR code during setup. It has this cool Star Wars type of, I don't know, Darth Vader kind of a little bit type of look. Looks cool actually. And then similar thing on the bottom. Again, I'm hiding some of the information here. And let's take a closer look at the port. So we have our power port right here. We have a 10 gig, up to 10 gig internet that it can support and it does support internet aggregation and this is gig in fact four of these are gigabit ports now you can actually go up to 11 gigs technically if you if you do have uh, two sources coming in but i mean for most cases including myself i'm just going to this 10 gig port so that's where the internet connects to that's where i'm going to connect this to my ont which is my optical network terminal essentially basically like a modem okay we have a usb port which I imagine it's for sharing your hard drive on the network. We have four gigabit ports and among these gigabit ports, there's also LAN aggregation. So I guess you could hook up two of these and to go up to two gigs, assuming you have another compatible device, let's just say like a NAS and network attached storage that also supports that, then you can in theory get up to two gig speeds from that. And we have another 10 gig LAN port, which is super important because when my internet comes in at five gigs, in, in my case, then it comes out at five gigs. But my LAN can actually still remain at 10 gigs because of this, which is awesome and then we have the power on and off and we have a factory reset so i ran the nighthawk as my main router and this thing is an absolute beast crazy fast and absurdly good range now i have all those numbers here and again i used my wi-fi devices i mentioned during the unboxing and in addition i also tested with my pixel 8 pro and pixel 8 both of which support wi-fi 7 however for some reason from what i've seen it can't connect to more than one band at the same time which is one of the new things that they added with Wi-Fi 7 is called MLO, multi-link operation, which allows Wi-Fi devices such as, Wi-Fi 7 devices, such as the OnePlus 11 5G to connect to more than one band at the same time. And that's why you have crazy fast speeds with this device over Wi-Fi 6E and prior devices, which Wi-Fi 6E and prior can only connect to one band at the same time. Whereas with Wi-Fi 7, it can connect to uh, pretty much all three in this case and that's why you see these crazy fast speeds which I will uh, go over but for some reason with the pixels it can't do that and again this has nothing to do with the Nighthawk I've tested this with the Eero Max 7 with the Orbi 970 and with the Deco BE85 I can't get uh, I get incredibly good speeds with the pixels as well but not as good as I do with the uh, uh, one plus 11 set up everything super simple super smooth however i did run into one issue with the nighthawk worth mentioning i think this can be an easy fix with a firmware update so the problem i ran into is so i set everything up set up my main ssid all my stuff automatically connected it was awesome super 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 smooth super fast everything was awesome okay 
As soon as I added a guest SSID, a guest network name essentially for guests to connect to, it stuck the Wi-Fi outputted the guest. It was outputting that. It was outputting my main SSID and the guest one. However, I was unable to get internet access from those Wi-Fi devices. So basically my streaming devices couldn't connect to it any longer. My uh, phones couldn't connect to it any longer. My cameras, pretty much nothing on Wi-Fi could connect to my main Wi-Fi, nor the guest. I, I have a couple devices that I connect to the guest just to try that out. Those devices couldn't connect to the guest. I even tried connecting one of my phones to the guest. It couldn't connect. So, but anything over Ethernet worked fine. Internet speed test, everything was fantastic, but I couldn't do it. So for some reason, adding a guest SSID kind of messed things up to the point that I actually, just for kicks, called tech support. Now, I'm always going through these routers and stuff, so I'm not new to this uh, concept, but I even called tech support, and the guy on tech support was awesome because he, he got straight to the point. And, and I basically, when I called, I said like, hey, look, I, I, I pretty much know what I'm doing. I've, I do this all the time. Is there some setting I need to know about? Is there some option that maybe something I had to click or check, which is not normal, but I'm like, hey, who knows? You know, this is brand new device, new technology. Maybe there's something, let me just ask. And the guy said, no, if everything else is working, you need to do a factory reset, which is what I did. So as soon as I did a factory reset, I reset all the settings and everything. So I set it up again and I didn't make a guest network this time and it worked fine. And then I did all my speed test, range tests. I did all the testing, ran it, uh, no drops, nothing like that. Everything was smooth. And then right before this review, I'm like, you know what? Let me add a guest network again just to try it out. And again, it messed things up again. So just as a heads up. So hopefully uh, there is a fix for it. I feel like uh, code wise, I mean, I'm sure the Netgear team knows way better than I do, but I'm thinking something is not in being initialized again or some flag is not being set, which is going to kick off something. But either way, I think it's just like a simple fix that can be fixed via firmware. Okay, so aside from that, perfect. Okay, let's get into the internet speed test. Now, no matter how fast the router is, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speeds. For me, that would be five gigabits per second upload and download. And this thing, as I mentioned during the boxing, can support up to 10 gigabits. So with my ethernet connected computers, I did a speed test. I get a little above that 5,000. So pretty much reached those numbers, no issues whatsoever. Now, looking at the Wi-Fi numbers, there is an obvious drop in speeds. However, still absurdly fast, especially the Wi-Fi 7 download speeds. Now, to find the true performance of this router, I do a local speed test. So I make my computer into the server and I go from Wi-Fi device to router to computer, isolating the router. So in this case, I basically get rid of my ISP, my internet service provider, and the public speed test server, which can be busy at times. So this really isolates this thing. And I've done a separate video on this where I show you guys how to set it up. Links below if you guys are interested. Running these tests, obviously I got much better numbers, especially in the upload section of the Wi-Fi 7 device, but overall much better numbers. This is kind of what you could expect with these Wi-Fi devices that I tested with. Now we get into range tests. Now range will vary vastly by location. If you're in between floors, if you have a lot of thick walls, if you're in a building with a lot of other routers around, all of this stuff can negatively impact your range. So essentially more obstructions, less range, less obstructions, more range typically speaking. Now, in my case, at 20 feet away inside my place, fantastic speeds. There is a drop, but just still overall crazy fast. At 50 feet, this is when I'm outside and I'm still getting absurdly good speeds, crazy speeds. And even at 100 feet across the street, still getting insane speeds. Now, this Nighthawk can go much farther than that. However, I did recently cap my range test to 100 feet just to keep things simple. Now, for setup and configuration, you use the Nighthawk app, which is available both on iOS and on Android, and it's super easy to set up. It tells you what to connect where. You're up and running in no time. You basically pick your Wi-Fi name and password, and you're golden. Now, it, it will also ask you to pick a login name and password just in case you want to go to the browser interface, which offers way more options than the Nighthawk app. So 
The Nighthawk app itself is a very simplified interface, which just gives you the main stuff. So, you know, if you're not really tinkering with it, the Nighthawk app is more than adequate. So you could, you know, choose your Wi-Fi name if you want to uh, there and you change your password and stuff, your guest network. You can do, uh, you can see which devices are there. You could pause devices. You could do a firmware update. You could do a speed test. Uh, and then there's also some parental controls. Now, the Nighthawk offers super, 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 super basic parental controls in terms of just pause the device and don't pause the device. But if you want, you know, a full suite of parental controls that does require a separate subscription. So just as a heads up, it can do it, but it does require a separate subscription. Now, when you go inside the browser, you type in the default gateway IP address, which in this case is 192.168.1.1. You access this, obviously it has to be connected to the router for it to access that. And if you guys are wondering, you can separate out the SSID, so you can have a separate 2.4, a separate five, and a separate six gigahertz band SSID. By default, it chooses one, that's what I personally prefer, but you can do that. And then there's, you know, VPN options. You can set up your DHCP there, run the router in access point mode if you want to. You could set up VPN stuff. Now, to summarize, this router is an absolute beast. I mean, it's crazy fast. I love the performance out of this thing. I love the fact that it has two 10 gig ports. I mean, I think performance routers like this one, they should have two of the fastest available ports. So if, if the router is a has 2.5 at the fastest, it should have two 2.5. So you can actually take full use out of this thing, just like this one. So, and I have a Netgear 10 gig unmanaged switch and I have cat seven and cat eight ethernet cable. So my home is ready for a 10 gig LAN. And I love the fact that this router supports that. It also has the USB. So if you want to share a hard drive on your network, you could do that as well. You also have some extra ports for just some regular devices uh, for up to gigabit speed. So just, but really the main thing with this was the performance was really even more than that at the distance. So when I do the range test and I see these numbers and I'm like, wow, like this is, this is the crazy thing. So with that, let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. And as always, smash that subscribe button. And I have way more videos coming up. In fact, I am also going to compare the Orbeez to each other. So I have the Orbeez 860 series, I believe, which is the Wi-Fi 6. The Orbeez 960 series, which is the Wi-Fi 6E. And the Orbeez 970 series, which is the Wi-Fi 7. So I'll compare Wi-Fi 6, 6E, and the 7 to each other. So there's going to be some comparisons coming Smash that subscribe button if you guys haven't already. Thank you guys for watching and have a fantastic day.